black men expect, black men of that caliber expect black women to be women. Femininity. A lot of y'all are A lot of y'all are men. Oh no, 100%. But that's because it's not enough masculine energy around. How can we be feminine? But we can't make that excuse. You, what, what excuse? See, we ain't talking about Joe. We're not talking about the C. We're talking about that one percent. thing. But what I'm saying is, you, we said, not, you said we're masculine because there's not enough masculine, uh, masculine energy, energy around. around. What if men started saying we're feminine because there's not enough feminine energy around? Because, it, I mean, that's, that's... But we can't say that, is my point. <sighs> Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Because I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. Sublime. Of course we're going to treat him like a regular because all, all we know is regular. We don't necessarily, if, like I said, that's how go, that goes back to the whole standards thing. You know what I mean? Like, if a man set his standards and what he do and what he doesn't, you know, what he allows, you come in my house, you got to take your shoes off. You can't walk around my house with no shoes on. It's the same way with conversation. It's the same way with how <sighs> etiquette. You know, you a lot of men. A lot of men don't hold hold doors. But I've been blessed enough to be. If I'm about to touch a door, uh, uh-uh, don't touch that door. And but that's not every man. So, but I don't expect every man to be that way. But when I, that's why I naturally go open the door for myself. But I know next time when I'm with this man, I better not touch that door. So it's on him that his ex-girlfriend would treat him like a regular person. Because if he didn't remind her that she that he wasn't regular, that's on him. Sis, you used to this, but this ain't this. And you, he allowed her to carry on. I'm sorry. So, hmm. That's interesting. Right now, a lot of black men, they are saying, I think I think the acronym is S Y S B M. Save yourself, black man. Okay. And the movement is all around this concept of African American black women are fundamentally broken. Mm-hmm. So instead of sticking around and trying to fix them and trying to check them and put them in their place, mm-hmm. go to Thailand, go to Africa, go to South America, mm-hmm. get you a Canadian woman, right? I mean, y'all been doing that though. Yeah, but but, other it, races, but it's, it's, a, it's a movement now. It's, it's a movement it's now. It's been a movement. Okay, That's why black women have been so mad. Like, we stay here, we got to deal with broken men, and we're not, you know what, forget this. I'm going to get me a Tommy. No, nah, Tommy just came over, and he just treated me better. That's why I'm with him. He treated me like how I feel like I should be treated. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, he's doing, he's moving that way. He's not, you know, he, he's just moving a different way. Not necessarily saying we don't. We love black men. Well, we'll get to Tommy. We're not, we're not letting go of black men. Like, you just said, oh, man, forget this. Y'all, we can't fix these women. Let's go to Thailand and turn up or go somewhere else and get a woman. What? Y'all just really just tell me that y'all really just brought to break our household? When at the end of the day, we both broken. And really, the only person that can fix the home is the black man. Because black men helping other black men is the only way we're going to be able to, oh, able to thrive. Correction, correcting your homeboy. He talking about he got five different shorties. Like, bro, why you got five girls? Like, bro, you let you raw dog in them too? So you don't care about no kids? Like, oh, so you, oh, so if you have a kid, you're not going to beat it. You know, certain things. But those aren't the men who are leaving. Huh? Those aren't the men who are leaving. Well, I mean, we, if we're talking about the 1%. It's the good dudes that are leaving, yeah. So the good dudes that I'm talking about, they've already done the work. And they're like, I shouldn't oh, have to babysit somebody. Leaving. I think the problem a lot of times. It just I just don't understand how men can't find no women and the ratio is just so high. I just cannot. That's one, that is one thing I cannot believe. I can't believe it. What what do you what do you think it is? That men they they're just as cocky as women. They feel like they should have a certain type of woman, just like we def, we feel like we should have a certain type of man. That's just a fact. So it's like we, men make it such a big rah-rah about women wanting a certain, you know, we want to raise our standards or be a certain way. But men, y'all, y'all want a certain type of women knowing that we are damaged from other men. You got us, sorry, you ain't get as fresh out the, 
with no experience from no other man, no trauma, no nothing. You know what I mean? Like, granted, yeah, people say you start to sleep clean slate, but once a movement is, a, you know, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a trigger warning. Like, when something happened, like if you moved a certain way, dang man, I remember. Okay, so that's how men, all men must move. So, I so what, what do you myself. think? What do you think women are doing wrong? Oh man, we doing. I mean, like I said, we definitely can't. We, we communication definitely needs to help. You know, happen a better way of communicating for women for sure. What is that better way? Huh? What is the better way? Because we say it a lot, but we never uh, actually define it. I think women are terrible listeners. Really? Absolutely. Well, I guess I do. I can only speak from. Oh, I can only speak for myself with that. Because um, I, I can listen. I listen very well. I think the only issue is when people think I'm not listening, just because I don't. Um, because I, my response is my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times, like I hear you, I understand what you're saying or more so my perspective. I'm giving you, now I'm giving you my perspective. Not necessarily saying that you're wrong, but I mean, at the end of the day, what you, what you saying? Has that, has that been effective? I think so. Explain. Hmm. I guess sometimes people just need to come, or when it comes to me, come to me and tell me that you're venting and not that you want that you don't want a conversation. Because when I'm about to just sit here and like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. No, I'm gonna give you a conversation. Or we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna, I mean. But my question, has that been effective? Like your disposition towards conversation, has that been effective? Or is it just one of those things, oh, you just gotta take the good with the bad? Oh, yeah, you got to take the good with the bad. I mean, I got to say, everybody got to say good and bad. I mean, if not, then we just only looking for good. And now y'all in Thailand trying to go ahead and get... But you don't think that's a problem? And then my question to you is then, like, why would a man who's done the work to become a 1% dude mm -hmm. deal with that? Oh, now, 1% man, I'm not doing it. You know what I'm saying? I know he's not a regular man. You feel me? I know I don't have to, it's, I guess what we thrive for, and it's like, it'll be so awesome even if the non-one percenters could even just have the mindset of the one percenters because it's really the mindset and the domination and the for sureness, the confidence, the, uh, like, I did, like, I, I am who I am because I build who I am. A lot of black men don't know who they are. So it's like, we, you know, we're trying to help, as I said, it's only going to take black men to help other black men figure out who they are. Cause it's so that sounds good. Here's the problem. When uh, when Kevin Samuels was talking about like why he transitioned, because you know at okay. first he was talking about men, mm -hmm. why he transitioned to talking about women. He said that um, as I was coaching these men, as I was improving them, and you know they make a lot of money. These men make three hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, teaching them how to dress, style, the whole nine. They came back and told me that they couldn't find any good women. Mm -hmm. When I hear a lot of women talk about that, mm -hmm. a lot of times it's, oh, they're not trying hard enough. Or how can they not find good women this, with this ratio? There's never any talk of what the women are doing wrong. And yeah. black women are doing a lot of things wrong, but they don't want to take any responsibility for it. Why but is that? are y'all saying what we doing wrong? Y'all don't listen. You give your opinion. Okay. But we, that's... Because you just sit here and just be like, what if you're wrong? We're going to let you be wrong? Y'all want us to let y'all be wrong. No. That's what it was. Or more folks figure it out. But it, it depends on who's telling you this. Like if, if, because at the end of the day, I don't think you should listen to who can Ray Ray, right? Right, exactly. But the reason I don't think you should be listening to him is because you shouldn't be dealing with him in the first place. Exactly. But here's the problem. Mm -hmm. A lot of women pick Pookie and Ray Ray. How many Pookie and Ray Ray do you think is out here? A lot of Pookie and Ray Ray. Exactly. But my point is, you pick Pookie and Ray Ray, you don't have the ability to, to identify a high value man. If, if, if a high value nigga walk past a lot of women, they wouldn't they be wouldn't able to identify because he ain't either. got the swag and all right. that other bullshit that people like. Um, but then when you get that high value man, you treat him like Pookie and Ray Ray. And then it's still his fault when he decides, I don't want to deal with that. 
I told you. He should have set the standards early. Should, this is, what, this is. What should it, she have done? She? Yeah, what should she have done? Because you said he. The more so he, say he, study men. Date more. Like date different type of men. That's the only way we're going to know. That's the only way we're going to know men are different. You don't think that like adds more baggage? Dating? Dating more men? No. Men, I mean, I'm not saying have sex with more men. I'm saying just date. It's hard. It's hard. Because I mean, it's hard because I mean that's I mean naturally men. I guess that's really what they do. But my my question is, if if black women have it so figured out, oh, yeah. but you guys act like you do, because we're confident. It's bullshit though. It's not real. If y'all were as confident as we were, we would be a whole nother. We would be on a whole nother planet. Black women, yeah. black men would just literally be on a whole nother planet, kicking it by ourselves, just two cocky people together. Just cocky and wrong. Why would be wrong? Because y'all's confidence isn't based in anything. Y'all, so like, it's based off of how you guys treat us. More so. That's like not we, true. It's like, I would I say that is more so treat women as the catch or more so like, I'm not going to say nothing, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to lose her or, you know, certain things of that nature when it comes to That's being in the relationship. That's really? not true. Mm -mm. Uh, matter of fact, in one of my interviews, um, the girl said that chaos is a uh, piece is scarier than chaos. And how she explained that, she said that a lot of us grew up in chaotic situations. Okay. So normal for us is chaos. So even when we are confronted with peace or a good dude, we'll turn it into a chaotic situation because it's familiar to us. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying to you is you're saying all these things that black men should do, should do, should do, should do. Mm -hmm. But for the men that I know who are like that, they have the toughest time with women. So the idea is that if you do all these things, I will be a God sent to you. And it's like, that's not the case. That's not the case. Everybody I know makes six figures and they're all black men. Mm -hmm. so, and what do they expect black women to be? Like how, like what is their I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say expectation this. of a black woman? I'm going to say this very, very like matter of fact. And I hope it's not offensive. Oh, no, not at all. Black men expect black men of that caliber expect black women to be women. Femininity. A lot of y'all are niggas. A lot of y'all are men. Oh, no, 100 percent. But that's because it's not enough masculine energy around. How can we be feminine? But we can't make that excuse. You, what, what excuse? See, we ain't talking about Joe. We're not talking about the sea. We're talking about that one percent. But what I'm saying is, you said, you said we're masculine because there's not enough masculine, uh, masculine energy, energy around. around. What if men started saying we're feminine because there's not enough feminine energy around? Because, it, I mean, that's, that's... But we can't say that, is my point. I guess it's because... When, when, when women are raised, we're raised to be strong. We're not necess we don't necessarily know what even masculine really means. You feel me? To even say like, oh, you masculine. Because if I'm raised without my father and all I know is my mom, so you're telling me really my mom is masculine? Okay, so you feel me? So I really don't have a broad, like a real sense of, oh, that's a nigga. You act like a nigga. But you, you proved my point. You said, because before you said that, um, there are not enough men to go around. And then you said men need to do this, 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 and this. And now you're saying that I don't know what masculine is. No, no, no. For a woman. Yeah. For a man. Yeah. But it's the same energy. Is it? A man being masculine, a woman being masculine, masculine is masculine. That's so Now, it doesn't look well. It doesn't look right when a woman does it, but it's still masculine energy. Because what is masculine energy it's for on a woman? What do you think it is? It's hard to, for me to know. Um, I mean, for me to say, because I've had men say that I, I do have like masculine energy. I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll explain it in one word. Agreeableness. Agreeableness. So because men have been socialized to be competitive. Okay. And what that means is. Okay. I can't just take what the world gives me. Okay. I have to chart my own course the whole nine. So if I'm presented with information. I have to first be critical of that information. I'm saying, hmm, right? Mm -hmm. There's the, the math mapping. Women, on the other hand. But we're raised that way. I understand that. Women, on the other hand, if you are going to be a queen, right? Okay. You have to submit under the authority of a king. 100%. So when the king says something, it's you got it, babe. That's 100%. agreeableness. 100%. Now, I the agree. problem is a lot of women think they're kings. 
How can I explain this the most? I, we were raised to think, I mean, not necessarily to think, but the, with the possibility of being alone. Men ain't really, you know, y'all not really, you know, it's either y'all expect that that might happen or, but as a woman, we're raised, we're more so the old idea was to be, okay, we're going to find a man and we're going to be pretty much up in his world. We join his world. But over time, I'm realizing Y'all world, y'all ain't got one. Y'all not even trying to build a world. Who? Who are you talking about? Not y'all. We ain't talking about you. We ain't talking about six figure babies. And we ain't talking about them. Okay, so who are you talking about? Well, I mean, we you, a lot of different. So, so you have two. You have two choices. Two di- it's two different. But you have two choices. Two different spectrums. You can either because if a man, if if how can I say this? I'm willing to submit to a man who I trust to lead me. If I don't trust you to lead me, what? The, too blind, leading blind? No, not me, because I'm not blind. I was already leading myself before I entered into your world. And now, but you I know. think I think women, I think women tend to, and especially our women, they tend to undervalue their power. I think women are extremely powerful. Okay. And this is what I mean by that. And this is another point Poetic Style made. He said, the reason a lot of men are walking around with struggle beards is because black women said they like their men be- bearded. Right. In a lot of ways, women dictate the market. Okay. Women establish what they want to see in the world. Mm -hmm. Even in in marketing, I used to work in marketing. 80% of retail decision making is made by women. If you work in real estate, you know that you have to convince the wife, not the husband, even though it's his money. Right. So women are extremely powerful. Feminine energy is extremely powerful. The problem is. What if what if the problem is? Because I can say this for me. Back to you asking me. I mean, like I said, some some men, but that they're, they're really like they're. I can sense their masculinity is a little bit higher than they say. Like I'm not as masculine because I mean I don't have to be masculine with them. I don't feel the need to be rah rah. You know, it's it's, it's, it's weird work. when it I can feel. Work like that. I know it doesn't work that way, but it's so, I'm sorry. It's like it's like dang, am I might as well get a dog or something because. If I don't feel, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't feel, I don't, like with you, I feel the masculine energy. You feel me? I feel the confidence in the, I am a man. You're going to respect me because I'm a man. Now, you, you're going to do that with another man, but y'all don't do that with women. We were supposed to click when we were never raised. Like, we, you know, we wasn't really raised in our feminine energy, but a lot of women might have been. I mean, I know. I- a lot of us were raised in, in, in toxicity. A lot, of, a lot of men, I complain more about black men than I do about black women. And a lot of what I complain about black men is that we're emotional. And a lot of the reason black men are emotional is because they were raised around emotional energy. They were raised yeah. around women, right? Yeah. So we can have that conversation. But so that's point, why maybe. But, but but the point I was trying to make is this: as women are complaining about these average men mm-hmm. that they're dealing with, that they refuse to submit to, and the whole nine, they have not taken the time to prepare themselves for the type of men that they say they want. That's a fact. And that's that's the that's, that's the fact. only problem. I'm not gonna lie to you. That's, a that's fact. the only. It's like I'm complaining about clocking in at McDonald's. But you're not getting a coding certificate to go work for Google. But you claim you you deserve a Google job. It's like you don't. You deserve exactly what you get. And my thing, my my biggest thing with women is this. We talk about submission, right? Mm -hmm. And, oh, I'm not going to submit to a man who ain't blah, 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 blah. The problem is you're still fucking that dude. I wouldn't even say that it's blah, 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 blah. It's really how you carry it. Sure, 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 sure. But, but, but here's the thing. Where's the direction you want for your life? If I was not here, where would you be without me? If I was not here, you would be up under another woman. You feel me? Moving the, the same way. That's here's, the, here's the problem. There's, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance with the conversation. What I mean by that is if you bend over in front of a man, open your legs, that is submission. Okay. So to draw arbitrary lines in the sand is I will submit physically, but I won't submit mentally. Or I won't submit this way. Either you submit to the man or you don't. And if you can't trust a man, yeah. my question to you is why are you with him? Why are you with him in the first place? You're right. Wouldn't it be better to be alone or, or take the time to prepare yourself for the type of man you say you want? Yes. Once we have that idea 
once we get that, once we go through the journey and understand that that's really what it is. But at that point, you're 40. Because who's teaching us that? But at that point, you're 40. No, I'm only and now 30. And you're bitter. Listen, I'm No, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking I know, about but yeah. realistically, I'll put it in perspective. Like, I know exactly what you mean because that's exactly the journey that I'm on now. You feel me? I took my 20s. Now, you, you know, you think you're going to be married, da, da, da. Like I said, you, you, as a woman who wants to submit... I realize that you, I can only submit to someone that has their own journey taken care of. And now I fit in their world, as opposed to me trying to join their world and I got my own thing going on and I'm kind of pulling you because, okay, go back to this regular or more so ordinary. Is that better than regular? Ordinary. We're going to say ordinary. Because I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm extraordinary. Okay, this is extraordinary. Okay, we're not ordinary people. Okay, some people are. It is okay to be ordinary. It is okay. But the comparison is, I mean, the, the, the struggle with that is, is, okay, you may be ordinary, but I got to be out in the world. You, don't, you want me to be home with you watching TV. Why are you with them? I'm not. That's why I got to go. But then, but then it's a problem. Conversation but then happens. it's a problem that I left. Because I want more. Dang, like you can't just, stay, you couldn't just stay with him. You couldn't just submit to what he got going on. You forget that. You don't need to worry about that. He going to. Why were you with him in the first place is my point. I think the problem is a lot of y'all fall in love with your idea of a man, not who he is or who he wants to be. And inevitably you will think that, oh, that's, that's not what I want. So it's like, why weren't you more attentive to who he said he wanted to be? I think it was what it what it what it was. It wasn't that. It was more I accepted of the man he was. You didn't accept it. I did. But if you're leaving, you it's, it's not mean, true it's acceptance. Two years. Acceptance. Yeah, I mean that's only, not true acceptance. The only reason why that I, only reason we, the only reason why I left is because he wasn't there for me when my grandparents died. Like certain things, I can't accept. But a lot of things I can. Were you, were you I surprised can, by that? Yes. Because I, cause he was my best friend, you feel me? He was literally someone that like, you know, over time, you feel me? Like, or more so after you go through the situation, you look back and you see all the pinpoints and, and the hints or whatever. Yeah, I might have accepted a lot. I didn't expect him not to be there only because, like I said, I, I didn't have nobody else. When we got together, I, I had friends throughout our relationship. Things changed as far as my friendships went. You know, so it was really just us. And then towards even that part went point when my grandparents passed away, we weren't even I mean, we weren't close, close because it was certain things that that I did accept. I had to say, like, OK, no, you know, start setting them standards. Because If you want to marry me, it's certain things you're going to have to to change or to be like, you feel me? Like you, you got to want more for yourself, sir. Like it's only certain me. Like, listen, black women, we love black men. We really be sitting here and this, you know, you think oh, women ego, you're not, you know, you're not, you're not extraordinary, you're not superior. But in reality, it's like, dang, if I just expect more because I hear you talking or I hear you complaining or if I hear you talking about how you want more and all I want to do is boost you and all I'm doing is boost you. And this is on my own personal experience. This ain't based off no other black woman. This is me as a black woman. And I mean, I've dated black men, you know, and I've women are really we, we have to settle. Men, men, men are the ones that I'm going to take you and make you my wife. We don't say, oh, this is my boyfriend and you my... No, at any given moment, that's not it. I'm, I'm going to say this. I think, I think this is where women fuck up. Okay. Especially our women. You prioritize a man you like over a man you admire. So what I mean by that is a lot of times like when the relationship ends... A lot of women will say, in hindsight, the signs were there, this and that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for instance, you know, he ends up being a deadbeat dad and things like that, mm -hmm. right? And part of the reason why, you know, sometimes it seems like I lack empathy is like, when you look at the signs and you look at the things that you qualified him based on, mm -hmm. they weren't things that translated into good dad. Mm -hmm. You didn't prioritize honesty. You didn't prioritize integrity. You didn't prioritize honor. You didn't prioritize discipline. Right. You didn't prioritize vision, stick to itiveness, right? Anybody can talk that shit. Right. But like, was this a man who was getting up and doing what he said he was going to do? At first, it was that fact. It was that. And then over time, 
mean, because I'm, I'm not gonna lie, he was an artist. You know, he's an artist. He listen, listen, he, he listen. It's it's real life. But I'm gonna say here, artists, as I seen him make a whole album in a room, and it was literally like he made it in the studio. That's how talented he was. I'm not gonna. I'm a real part. I'm a real one. You know, if something don't sound good, I can't. I'm not gonna be able to listen to it. You know. So at first it was, but then it was like his team dismantled. Manager wasn't there. His friends wasn't there. It was us going to the clubs and talking to the DJs and helping him understand if he's a business himself, he got to move for himself before anybody else moves for him. So it's just, I guess I'm just not the right black woman to talk to because I'm here for the black man. I'll be over here like, okay, I accept it. You know, I'm here for you because at some point, like I said, I'm older. So... I'm realizing, you know, when it is like, I mean, not being technical with the submission with laying up with people, but when it comes to being, you know, sub submissive, I understand that eventually your money is going to be our money. So I got to help you get to that. I want to help you grind and understand because I believe in you, black man. You know what I mean? Like literally, I believe in you because I see everybody else is not is failing you. But you're not over time. You're not really pushing yourself like, and it's like now you telling me about things that I've already told you, and I gotta sit here and say I told you. So now it's time for me to go. I'm gonna say this: Our women need to stop fucking with creatives, and this is why. So, one one of the interesting things that um, I read somewhere it said. Romance was created by unemployed white artists. So, you know, a lot of the concepts when we think about love and the butterflies and shit like that, it was created by motherfuckers who just like sat around and looked at the sunset all day. They didn't have jobs. They didn't have families to take care of. So a lot of those I things, swear, a correct. lot of those things are unsustainable. Right. And we fall in love with a lot of childish things that don't age very well. Facts. And in our community in particular, we prioritize the rappers. We prioritize the, the, the musicians and the artists and all those eclectic professions that don't translate well over 20, 30, 40, 50 years right. most of the time. But again, most of our women think they're extraordinary and that their case is going to be different and that this Gucci man is going to turn into that Gucci no man. And that's not how shit works. So again... Well, with that's with those women. Let me, let me, let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. So again, like... The fact that he made an album in his room and it sounded studio quality. Yeah. From my point of view as yeah. a professional black man means absolutely nothing. Oh, of course, because you're a professional. But the fact that yeah. no, no, not the fact that he's an oh, artist. But if he like, was able to yeah. leverage his radio network, if he was able right. to put together a media package, right. if he was able to start collaborating with other artists and building bridges, then I'll know that he's serious. That's why I had to go. But talent means nothing. And that's what listen, I wish our women understood. It's listen, I need you to understand. It wasn't like some little Ray Ray who worked at the gas station. No, he was he was signed to, you know, signed to Zaytoven. You feel me? He had executive meetings, you feel me? He had meetings where A and R with his manager. Like I'm seeing the motion. He was they was talking about, you know, actually um when you know how um OBJ is getting his salary in Bitcoin. That's how the way it was a couple of years ago for musicians. Before before Tory Lanez did it, you know. So, I man, it's not even about him making. I, I know good music. I know music. So it's like. It's well, let me ask you this: Was he was he somebody who? It was just he had no team. You can't do the media press. Well, let me, let, let me, no let me ask you this: Was he somebody who, when he said he was going to do something, it was going to get done? Or was he somebody who, if he felt like it, if he was in the right mood, state of mind, you know, those artist type shit. Mm. Was he reliable? When it came to his music, when it came to his art, no, he worked on that all the time. Like that was off top. But some creatives are only creatives. They're not businesses. Like they don't know how to be a That's business. That's my point. No, no. fact, and yeah, I had to learn creativity that. isn't gonna raise Listen, your children. And it sucks because that's why you need a team. No, my well, my point is, and this is because I, I was shit. I told him what to do. This is the bigger but point. he didn't do it, and that's why I had to go. This is the bigger picture. For me, you know, just from a biological standpoint, especially when we're looking at it in our community, the mortality rate of a pregnant black women is high. Mm -hmm. When you choose to have somebody's child, mm -hmm. 
you're essentially saying to God, the universe, and, and your community that I'm willing to risk death mm-hmm. to clone this nigga, right. to create another him, right? Mm-hmm. And what I'm saying to black women is you're not creating or recreating the type of men you claim you want to see. That's a fact. So my point is, if you keep prioritizing these artists and these creatives, who the fuck are going to lead the next generation? Artists and creatives? Oh, no, because my son is going to be raised out. I told you I'm not the right black woman to have these type of conversations because because everything you're saying, I agree with. You know, I was with I was with my ex for two years. And at two years, I study people. You know, I pay attention to people, how to move. Like I said, you see, I got to accept it or I'm not going to accept it. And I had to accept a lot of things. But over time, I noticed how parenting was, you know, how he moved with his son. I don't have any children. I'm 31 with no children. That's like a unicorn in the world, low key. So because I know exactly what you're saying, I'm not going, not even just clone him. I don't want to have the wrong person imprinting on my son or on my children. Because your mind, it got to be... My mind is too astronomical. I think about too much. It goes so fast. It's too much going on. My kids are probably going to be just like that because if I'm bored, we are, we chilling together. So what are we about to talk about? Even at two, one, six months, if if you just really just want to be a come home, yeah, hey son, and keep it pushing, you can't really be. You it's not going to work either. So it was certain things that I accepted, and then over time, I'm like, you can never be my husband. And it sucks because as women, like who do who are we to say who's gonna be our husband? But it's certain things we gotta know, we gotta pay attention to. It's like, 